whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked in alms. And Peter, fasting in his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. I want to stop right there, and I want to preach on that tonight. That here's this fellow. We can all relate to it. How many of y'all seen these fellas standing down here, probably at Garth Road in I-10? Now have them a little sign, and it says, "Please help." God bless you, or something like that. Hey, Amen. Y'all see those fellas yeah. all, all over Houston? You see them? We see them over there in Pasadena. I, I mean, they have their little sign, and that's that's what this fellow's doing. He's sitting there uh, at, at, at the uh, temple, and, and he's begging, right? Looking for just some help. Peter and John come up. He tell, Peter tells him, look on us. Won't you remember that phrase there, look on us. And then the Bible says this, he took heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. Let's pray. Father, I do need your help this evening. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity again to preach. Lord, we need you tonight. It's already been asked, Father, that God, I'd be put out of the way. Lord, I, I, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Lord, just ask you to use me tonight. Thank you that you're such a great God. Please help me to preach tonight. Direct my thoughts and my mind. God, help me to say those things that will help us tonight be more like Jesus. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. You know, when we stop and look at the world that we live in right now, our nation, excuse me. It's hard for a fat man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me like that. One time to look at Our nation's in trouble. Amen. I, I mean, let's just be honest. And, it, and it, let me say this it's not a Democrat problem, it's not a Republican problem. Right. <laughs> Spiritual problem. Amen. But our nation's in trouble, man. You look around and and, and I, I mean everywhere we look, there's another problem. Whether it's a, a, a financial problem, whether I mean I don't know about you, I, I'm government's getting way too big for me. Amen. Amen. Too intrusive. Yeah. Uh, when when I, I'm just does not surprise me, I guess, what's going on in the Bible. Paul told Timothy that you know, evil men are going to wax worse. Yeah. So it, it shouldn't surprise us. But in the Bible's clear, by the way, it says it, 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 last days be perilous times. I believe we're in those yes. last days. That word perilous means dangerous times. Yes, sir. But as we live, man, what an opportunity that you and I have. Oh, yes. It's one like no other Christians have ever had. I, I really am convinced of that. We, we have an opportunity to re represent the Lord Amen. That, that a lot of folks have never had. That's right. Yeah. And, and you listen, I, I'm convinced that uh, uh, if things continue to progress the way they are, and the Lord does not return soon. Uh, you and I are going to be forced to uh, take some difficult stand. You're right. Well, right. I believe that. We, we really are. And, and I'm, I'm afraid there's a lot of folks today that call themselves Christians that are... Uh, You're plowing well. 
Don't be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's Angel true. Of all. I, I pray God give me grace not to do that. Amen. Amen. Let, let's be honest. I, I I wouldn't be so foolish as, as to stand and say that uh, I know what I'm going to do given a certain situation. You you don't know. Yeah, right. You're right. Best thing we can do is just pray for God's grace and God's Amen. help. Amen. Amen. That Amen. When we're uh, uh, faced with the difficulties and trials of Amen. life, that we can stand firm for the Lord. Amen. But we we man, it, we're in some some awful times. And we need revival. Amen. I mean, we are in desperate need of revival. Yes, sir. Sure. I, I'm convinced, and, and I, I don't, I don't mean this unkind or any anything, but listen, the the Presbyterians are not where we're going to get revival from. Amen. Yeah. The the Lutherans and the Methodists, I, I mean, they have a, a long since put away their stand. You're right. For the Lord. Right. They they put away the Bible and got them a book that's convenient. Right. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and uh, I, I I really believe this, and I I, I wasn't born into a, a independent Baptist church. Uh, I, I grew up as a Southern Baptist, and uh, I, I left there on purpose. I don't mean to yeah. be offensive to. Them, yeah. But but they left what I believe is right. Yeah. And they begin to hook up with yes, sir. fellowship with things that yes, I believe is sin. Yes, sir. And they left the King James. They left their standards when it comes to dress and, yeah. right. and, and, right. and when it comes to lifestyle and, right. and those kind of things. I, they, they left me. I, I had to make a decision. And I, uh, I, to be honest, it wasn't a difficult decision. Yeah, that's but, good. But the truth is that if we're going to have revival, it's going to take churches like this. Yes, sir. That will stand for truth. Right. Where the man of God does stand and preach without compromise. Amen. And by the way, the only way he can do that is if you back him up. Amen. I, I'm here to tell you, folks, listen. You're right, I, I, I've been there. And I, I've been in churches that they, they won't back you up. And there's not much a preacher can do. You're right. Uh, listen, it, it is not just up to Miss Karen and and, and uh, Brother Jim to, to build a church here. Yeah, fill that. And thank God that, that I look around and that's not what's going on here. Amen. 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 But uh, but but if, if we're going to have revival, it's going to be fundamental. Yeah. Baptist church. You're right. Where the revival is going to come from. Yeah. And, and if we're going to be that kind of church where revival comes from, and I believe we can look here in Acts chapter 3 and, and maybe just get a little bit of something tonight that will help us to get us headed in a direction to have revival. I, I believe there's something here that, that we can uh, uh, take hold of and look at tonight. And I, I believe something that, that uh, too many times we're guilty of that that I, I believe the Lord can use tonight. I, I, I want you to notice uh, two phrases quickly before we get into the message. Look down at verse 4. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Yeah. Hey, Christian, uh, listen to me tonight. Go ahead. As we are faced with this world, you and I need to be prepared to yeah. say, watch me. Hey. Amen. Amen, preacher. Watch me. Yeah. It's all right. I, yeah. I, I'll live a life that's exemplary. Go ahead. Watch me. Amen. That's good preaching. Hey, you know what we do far too many times? We get mad You're right. when we tell You're them right. we're a Christian and they pull out their magnifying glass and that's what oh, they do. Yeah. Amen. You say, I'm a Christian. They get out their magnifying glass and they start looking real close. Anybody yes, got family that does that? Yes, sir. Uh, amen. Yes, sir. Uh, and you do just some little something wrong and man, they blow up. Oh, see? See? I, oh, you're the one that said you're a Christian. Oh, look what you did now. Oh, you can't really be saved. I mean, I, you, you, oh, you hypocrite, you. Right? Yeah. 
Anybody yeah. ever, yeah. ever faced that before? Yeah. Huh? Maybe down at the workplace or... But we're going to have to be a crowd if we're going to have revival. You're right, Bruce. We're going to have to be a crowd. Hey, didn't Paul say this? Follow me. As I follow Christ. As I follow Christ. Amen. Said. Yeah. Huh? Follow me. Hey, look on us. That's what Peter said. Hey, hey, fella, uh, you need help? Look at me. Amen. Amen. Look at me. Hey. Not, by the way, we're not going to do that in an arrogant way, amen, not no, looking at it because no. we're prideful or something like that. Right. No, we're going to do it because we know who we're following. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. amen. Right. So we, we're going to have to get to where we'll say, hey, look on us. That's you can good. follow us. Right. I, I got something that you need. Yeah. Look on me. Sure. Huh? Uh, again, not in a prideful way. We don't mean it that way. But but in a, hey, we got the answer, amen or not? Huh? Man, I, I, I'm so glad September the 14th, 1981, I, I knelt beside my bed and called on the Lord, and he saved me. Brother Joey, I ain't never backed up since. Now, I, I'm not perfect, but, but I'll promise you this, I'll bind you this, my heart's always wanted to Follow God. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I want to live a life that others can look at and, and say, hey, the, the guy may not be perfect, but I can follow him. Yes, sir. Hey, every one of us ought to be like that. Yes, sir. Now, let, let's look at verse 5. This, this guy gives heed to him. Now, listen, let's be honest. Now. Everybody that you try to talk to isn't going to listen to you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We know that's the truth, man. You, uh, hopefully you've been out uh, soul winning before, out knocking doors. Uh, and you try to talk to somebody at work, maybe. Uh, try to talk to family. Not everybody will listen to you. That's right. But they just won't. Hey, not everybody's ready to listen. Yeah. Right. Hey, unless the Holy Spirit of God does something in their heart anyway. They, they pray all the prayers they want to. They ain't going to get saved. That's yeah. right. Takes God doing something. Yeah, still does. And, and, and so the, the truth is, uh, there's still some out there, though, that will give heed. That God's working in their heart. Right. And, and given the right time and, and the right place, when we say, look on us, they'll listen. Hey, you, I mean, y'all listen to somebody down the road somewhere. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, was, I, I remember when I was uh, still lost and... Uh, I, I was just a, I was in my early 20s, and I'd grown up in church, but uh, uh, I wasn't saved, and out living in the world, and, uh, godly, uh, I remember uh, my, my mom and dad uh, had asked Brother Ken Garrett, he was the bus director at, at their church, to come by my house, and Brother Ken, it is a rainy night, storming outside, I live in an upstairs apartment there in Pasadena, he came up there, and I, I was sick. I had the flu. I, I was laying on the floor there, and Brother Ken knocks on the door, and I drug myself over to the door. He saw that I was sick, so he didn't try to uh, come in or stay long or anything. But he did say this. He said, Scotty, don't let your ignorance keep you from going to heaven. Amen. He turned around walked down the stairs. Man, I don't want to kick that guy. Yeah. He think he is. God used that and I stuck with him. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, wow. you don't ever know when the Holy Spirit of God is going to use you. That's right. Amen. He's working on somebody. But this fellow, listen, Peter and John's talking to him. Look on us. He gave heed. And, and look at what it says now. Expecting to receive something of him. We're going to have revival, folks. We're going to have to understand the lost crowd has the right to expect to receive something from it. Amen. Amen. That's good, preacher. We, we get mad too, too often. Yeah. We, we act like, man, we look down our, our, our pious nose at, at folks. 
too many tattoos yeah. or they're not dressed right. Boy, he's a drunkard, she's a harlot. Uh, uh, I, I mean, we, we kind of look at folks in a, a, with our pharisaical nose and act yeah, like uh, we're long. something that, uh, that, 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 that uh, they, you know, I, I never was like that. Shut up. I mean, hey, listen, there ain't nobody in here born clean. Hey, man. Yeah. That's true. Now, we, we're not going to start digging in the dirty laundry, amen? Yeah. <laughs> but let's just be honest with ourselves where we came from. Amen. It's good. And quit looking at folks like, yeah. like they, they, they're beneath us. Go ahead, something. preacher. That's right. Yeah. You, you ain't never going to help anybody like that. Hey, man. And too many times that's what we do. Yes, sir. And, and we get mad because they do expect something from us. Mm -hmm. Right? Wait, I, I thought this thing was about helping folks. I, I, I thought that right. was exactly about right. 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 That's exactly right. I, I thought it was about loving folks and helping folks. And to, they have the right to expect something from them. Amen. Good preaching. They have the right to expect something. Amen. Wow. Hey, they, they, I, I mean, we, we ought to challenge them. Watch me. Yeah. Now, let me, let me help you out here. Go ahead. If you ain't living it. Right. Don't tell them watch you. Right. Because they're going to unload on you when yes, you mess sir. up. Yes, sir. Huh? And let's be honest. The best of us going to mess up. Amen. Sooner or later. And they're going to unload on us, and you better be ready. You better be spiritually ready and humble yourself. Otherwise, you're going to come unscrewed on them. Yes, sir. That's true. Amen. Yeah. And that's not going to help a thing. Amen. There ain't nothing good that comes from the flesh. Right. So getting mad at them and acting like who do they think they are expecting something from you yeah. ain't going to help. They have the right to expect something. Amen. From you. They sure do. Amen. Hey, we're the one that got up there and said, hey, I, I, I got saved. I followed the Lord in baptism. I'm yeah. a church member. Yeah. I, I, I tithe. I, I go soul winning. I read my yeah. Bible. I pray. We're the ones that are saying that. Amen. Right. If we're going to say that, we're going to claim that testimony. Hey, they have the right to Amen. expect something of them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, thinking on that. Turn quick, Matthew chapter 10. Now, if y'all don't start listening a little bit quicker, we're going to be here a while. I recommend y'all listen a little bit quicker. My, my wife's inside going, oh no. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10. You're saying that a lot. <laughs> Matthew 10, look down at verse 7 and 8. And as ye go, preach. Now, ladies, in, in this sense right here, this preach be all right for you. Yeah, amen. It's not standing. Uh, it's not talking about standing here in a pulpit preaching. Right, right. It says, as ye go, preach. I, I just got a sneaking hunch. He's talking about some soul winning going on right here. Yeah, amen. 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 As ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out the devil. Hey, that's our business. Right. Don't get scared of all of that. Right. We're not charismatic, amen. amen. But God's still in the, in, in the miracle business. He's still in the healing business. Yes, sir. Amen. amen. Then look at what it said. Freely ye have received. <coughs> Freely give. Amen. As they expect something from you, you ought to be willing to freely give. What about that? Now, back, back over in Acts. Run back over there. Acts chapter 3. Uh, uh, just one more introductory comment, and then we'll get to the message, all right? Amen. Back over in uh, Acts chapter 3. Oh, oh, some of you need this. You ain't figured out them fellas down there with the sign yet that says, please help. All right? Look, look at what it, verse 5 says, he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. 
Then Peter said, here, now here's just some help. You ready? Silver and gold have I none. Yep. Hey, you, listen to me. Look at it. Listen to me. What those folks need is not money. Right. Amen. You're not helping them when you give them money. That's true. Certainly. Now, some of you just breathed easy. You said, oh, man, finally got an excuse not to give me. <laughs> Maybe you ought to give them something. Yeah. Hmm. But the truth is, that's not what they need. That's right. Hey, if, if that's what this fella needed, uh, God would have poured a boatload of money in right. Peter and John's right. pocket, yep. and they'd have said, here you go, fella. Here, here, here's what you need. This is what I help you. Hey, money is not what they need. Amen. 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 Right. Peter right. said, silver and gold have I none. Right. So that's, hey, listen, I, I know Brother Jim faces it just like every pastor does. Uh, it, it, he probably can't even keep count of the calls that he gets weekly looking for financial help. Yes, sir. Can, can, can you pay? Do uh, you all pay light bills? Do you all pay rent? You, all, and you know, it, it's amazing. Let me just <coughs> chase the rabbit in while it runs by. It's amazing they don't want to come to church, Brother Joel. You're right. Until it's time to get help. Brother Jim was just saying that the other, the other night. Yes, sir. Yeah. Until it's time to get some money. Then they want to come over here. Yeah. That's it. Why, why don't they go to their drug buddies or their, yeah, their drug buddies and stuff? Why, why don't they go there and look? Hmm. It, this, is, this is the thing. Understand this. They know they need help. Right. They just don't know what kind of help they need. Yeah. That's true. It's good. That's good, preacher. And it, it's not money. That's never the answer. Amen. That, by the way, if that's what you think is going to solve your problems, you're wrong. Amen. Amen. That is not it. God ain't broke. Right. No. He's just trying to get your attention. Amen. And a lot of times, with all of us, money will get your attention quick. Sure. You're right. Huh? He starts putting a squeeze on you financially. Man, it's time to pray. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Wow. Tell the truth. Now, what is it that they can expect? What should they expect? Take your Bible all the way back to Jude, verse 22. <laughs> Excuse me. Jude is right there in front of the book of Revelation. Get there in the book of Revelation and just uh, uh, look at uh, chapter 1. You're probably looking at the book of Jude. Just a few verses there. But look down to verse 21. We'll start reading there. Jude in verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and the eternal life. And of some, here it is, have compassion. Hey, the first thing that we ought to give them, that they have the right to expect from us as Christians, is some compassion. Hey, you want to make a difference in somebody's life? Have some compassion on them. Man, quit being so hard-hearted. Quit, quit being so, so tight and acting like, man, everything's all right down at your house. Quit acting like, man, nothing's ever been wrong with you. And have some compassion on them. Oh, yeah. Amen. Man, when you look at folks, remember, I used to be there. Amen. And, and, and maybe you hadn't been exactly where they are, but you was real close. Right. Amen. And just have some compassion on them. Hey, listen, we're Christians. Amen. We're, we're the folks that, that love God. Right. And God is love. Right. And, and of all people that ought to love folks and have compassion on people, be able to look at them with a heart that's tender and say, man, but for the grace of God, there go I. Yeah, right. Don't be this crowd right here. Yeah. And if we're going to ever have revival, 
We're going to have to start having some compassion on a world that's headed for hell. Yes, sir. Amen, preacher. But let's be honest tonight. We don't talk to folks about the Lord like we ought to. Yes, you're right. We, we pass up an awful lot of opportunity. Yes, sir. We, we really don't have it. Man, some use the, the well, I, I, I just, you know, I, 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 I can't go and out soul winning and stuff. Brother Scott, I, I, maybe I'm too old. I, 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 I'm just, I, my, my feet can't take it. I got bad feet. My feet can't take it. I, I just don't have the time. If you just knew, Praise God. Mm -hmm. If you just knew. And all, besides all that, I'm tired. <laughs> and, and I only have, you know, I mean, I only have Saturday off. I, I can't come up here and go soul winning and get everything done down to the house, too. How about you do this? How about this? Instead of Maybe going every Saturday. Maybe you could just go one or two Saturdays. Yes, sir. How about that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? That'd be better than not going at all. Amen. 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 Preach it. Listen, the, the truth is that every one of us ought to thank God that he had compassion on us. Amen. Amen. And that he kept chasing after us. Right. And I grew up in a Christian home and would not listen. They rebelled against mom and dad and told them, that's it, I ain't going back to church. When I was 16 years old, I told them that. Hmm. Daddy should have took a baseball bat to me right then that yeah. maybe help me. Amen. I don't care if you like it. Yeah. Oh. But he did do this. He kept loving me, kept praying for me. Right. Hey, Had to kick right. me out of the house. Amen. Didn't yeah. I follow the yeah. rules? Yeah. I'm home drunk and stoned and all that right. stuff. They said, you can't live here like that. Amen. Amen. It's tough to do. But there's the door. Yeah. But he kept praying for me. Yeah. Amen. So that on September 14th, 1981, 630 in the morning, when the Holy Spirit of God got a hold of my heart, I knew where Daddy was. <laughs> he is sitting at that, in the kitchen there, sitting at the bar, had his Bible open, was reading it. I'd seen him do it many, many times. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit of God got a hold of my heart, and I picked up that phone, I, I'd already gotten on my knees. I don't know what I said. I know I was already saved. I, I, I'd gotten on my knees and talked to the Lord about it, but I, I was crying, and my heart was broken. I knew I needed Jesus, and I, I, I got on the phone because I knew Daddy would be there. And I said, Daddy! <laughs> He thought somebody broke in the apartment, beat me up or something. <laughs> Daddy! He said, yeah, what is it? I said, I want you to pray with me. I need to get saved. Amen. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! He said, yeah! Praise the Lord. Man, he, he, I, I mean, we prayed. And I, don't, I don't have any idea what was said. I really don't really have no idea. Yeah. I, I know this. The Lord came into my heart that, that morning. He had compassion on this old drunk, this old uh, a drug head, and uh, he, he loved me. And, uh, and Mom and Daddy continued to love me and pray for me. And Grandma and Grandpa continued to Praise love God. Me Amen. pray for me. Amen. God, Amen. God, somebody Amen. had some compassion. That, yes, that when the Holy Spirit of God got a hold of my heart, somebody was there to say, Hey, I love you. I've always loved you. And you're welcome home. Hey. Sir. We're never going to have revival without it. You're right. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Not only compassion. I need to hurt. We're going to have compassion. We're going to have to take them the gospel story. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, they have the right to expect that. Amen, yes, sir. Huh? Right. Another name given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. What says? Huh? Hey. You're, how many of y'all are saved tonight? You're Christian, you know? 
You know if you die right now, you're going to heaven. All right? I look around, that's most of the hands. Right? You the one said you're saved. Right? You're child of God. Why don't you know the gospel story well enough to tell somebody else? That's good right there. Why, why didn't you ever learn? Well, by the way, just tell them what he did for you. That's right? It. That's, That's it. it. That's it. That's how easy it is. Huh? That's it. That's that easy. I mean, there's no magic verses or anything. They're You're right. Written. You're right. I mean, sure, I know you can learn the Romans road and all that. But man, just tell them what he did for you. Yes, sir. But they have the right to expect that. Yes, amen. And, and by the way, they are expected. They yes, are. Sir. And, and I, I'm telling you, you listen to me. Sometimes when we don't give it to them, they are disappointed in us. Yeah. Yeah. I remember before I got saved, there was a couple of fellas at work. One was named Jasper Beatty and the other one was named Richard. I worked out at Armco Steel over here on the ship channel. I was in my early 20s. And I remember Richard, he is an Assembly of God fellow. But every time I turn around, he'd have somebody hemmed up in the corner, have his New Testament out doing like this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he'd hem them up. Old Jasper Beatty, he'd do the same thing. He'd be telling people about Jesus. I was honoring. I, I, you forgive me, I wasn't saved. I made fun of those guys. I mocked them. I laughed at them. The morning I got saved, I went to Richard. He'd worked graveyards. I was coming on days. I came in that morning. And I said, Richard, never guess what happened to me today. He looked. He said, what? I said, man, I got saved. You know what he did, Kirk? He looked at me and he said, anybody but you. <laughs> he told me later he was scared to talk to me. I don't know why. I really don't. I'm being honest. I, 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 but I, I have to admit, I mocked the guy. I cursed the guy. I had to apologize to him that morning. Amen. After I told him what I was saying. The tears were going down my face. I told him, Richard, I'm sorry. I made fun of you. And you were right. You were right. I went to Jasper that morning. I told him the same thing. And I'm sorry. I was wrong. You were right. Man, listen. What if those guys had never told me? Yeah. I got saved and then came to him. Why didn't you tell me? Yeah. How many folks in your family have you never told? Oh my. Hey, listen, we're, we're going through a tough time right now with some of my wife's family. Because we keep telling them, they're mad at us. Sorry. That's, it's hard, isn't it? My wife's crying right now. It's hard. But what would be harder is if we never tell them and they go to hell. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What am I going to do then? Hmm. Listen, I, I've told Brother Jim one of the things we're praying about doing. I mean, I, I don't know for sure what God wants us to do right now. We're praying about moving back up home. See, if we can't get them saved. I don't believe God's it's being too mad about that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey, we owe this world the gospel story. Yes, sir. Sure, right. He saved us. He had compassion on mine. Aren't you telling somebody? Let me ask you, when's the last time you really told somebody how they could be saved? Yeah. I'm not talking about just talking about it. When's the last time you really did it? Amen. Amen. Man, if we're going to have revival, we've got to quit making excuses. Yes, sir. We've got to get busy and tell folks. Yes, sir. Let me move on. It's getting late. John chapter 14, if you would, turn over there.
They ought to expect a gospel story from us. They ought to expect compassion from us. John chapter 14, look down verse 26. <clears throat> but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Another thing they have the right to expect from us is this, some peace. Yes, yeah. sir. It, it says right here that the, the implication, best I can tell, is this, that the Holy Spirit of God will be, bring peace into our life. Let me just ask, let me get a little personal here. How come you fuss and fight down at the house all the time? Yeah. Right? Amen. Huh? That, 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 verse 26 again. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. This is verse 27. Peace I leave with you. Mm -hmm. Huh? The implication is this, Brother Kevin, that the Holy Spirit of God will bring peace into your life when you get saved. Yes, right? Amen. Man, our kids fuss and fight all the time. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And we act like it's normal. Hey, it's not normal in a Christian home. Amen. 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 Hey, Mama and Daddy, all that Fussing and fighting you're doing? There's a spiritual problem down there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I don't care what the argument's over. I'm telling you, it's a spiritual problem. Amen. That's good preaching. Forget whatever the words are. Yeah. The spiritual problem. Man, li listen to me. The, the truth is, people are looking for peace. Yes, sir. And, and the world is convinced that if anybody has peace, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he looks around at the Lord's people and they're fussing and fighting just like the rest of the world. Right. And they think, I already got that. Yeah. And we ought to have peace. And we ought to be able to tell others. And I got a peace that passes understanding. Yes, sir. I, listen, I, I, I'm not crazy. I, Miss Debbie and I. But I am saying this. Man, we ought to stop when we do that and say, wait a minute. This isn't of God. Amen. We need God's help. Amen. Let, let's, let's stop. How many of y'all like fighting? I'm convinced some of us do. Amen. Yeah. Oh, we like it. We do it a lot. Amen. Huh? Yeah. It's amazing. I, I, I've watched it. I, I guarantee you. It, it, most of the preachers here say the same thing. Man, you can tell. They get out of the car, and you can tell they've been fussed and fighting. Man, the smile goes on. And all the way to church, man, they've been fighting. The kids been fighting in the back seat. Mama and Daddy fighting in the front seat. We get out of the car and come into the house of God, and there ain't no peace. Yeah. Then left the Holy Spirit of God back down to house. Sure. Yeah. I wonder if they ain't not listening to you. Let me move on. By the way, a life without peace is a miserable life. Amen. 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 None of us, I guarantee you, you, you don't like all that fuss and fighting. You, you'd much rather have peace. Man, you come home from work, be able to sit.
sit down and just have some peace. By the way, the house ought to be a place, a, 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 a resort away from this world. Sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just like the church is. Yes, sir. Let, let, let's look. Romans chapter 14. I, I've got to pray. I, I promise. I, it, it's about seven or eight minutes after. I, I'm going to get through and get out of here. Romans chapter 14. Down to verse 17. It says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. That'll help us preachers, amen. <laughs> amen, Brother Kevin. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> For the kingdom of God, I like going out to eat just like the next fellow. You know, after meat is over. Amen. But it's not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace. Look at this. And joy. I like that. Hey, Christian, what happened to your joy? Good. Far too many times Christians done lost their joy. <coughs> I mean, really, we, how many of y'all have struggles in life? Let me see you again. Right? Sure. We got struggles. We got trials, tribulations. Hey, man, you're married. I mean, no, that's not what I mean. There's struggles in life. But if we're not real careful, instead of getting God in on our struggle, we lose our joy. Yeah. And God's not in on it. It's easy to do. That's true. Man, you, you lose your joy. Life becomes miserable. Amen. Did you ever just, I, I mean, have, have you noticed sometimes just the littlest thing set you off. Yeah. Now, let's be honest for a second. First place, you don't treat anybody outside of the family like you do the family. You tell the truth. Huh? I mean, you, you're so patient and long-suffering with everybody outside the family. They can say whatever they want to, and man, it just go right over your head. You're all right. But I mean the littlest thing down at the house. You snap just that quick, man, the fight's on. You ever stop and thought, why is that? Why, why did I snap if my wife so quickly, where if somebody else said the same thing, I'd, I'd be kind and gracious? And Yeah. Let's be honest, that ain't right. Amen. amen. Say amen right there. It's not right. Amen. I'm telling you, a lot of times it's because this, we got some anger built up down here that we can't let God deal with. Amen. Mark my word. Because we don't mean to, but we get mad at God. Yeah. We don't ever say it outside of our mouth. Down here, we say, God winds you. chapter 2. Let me, let me read here what Paul said to Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse uh, 22. He said uh, verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work, flee also youth, youthful lust, 
but follow righteousness. Hey, they have the right to expect righteousness from us. Amen. Amen. We are the children of <coughs> righteousness. The children of Hey, didn't he say, Brother Joey, be ye holy for I am holy? What is that? Yes, sir. Hey, what? what let me, let me just ask you something real quick. Why do you want to hang on to all that stuff that's yeah. so carnal and worldly anyway? Hmm. Good question. That stuff that has ruined your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That stuff that is dragging you off to hell. Why do you want to hang on to that? Good question. I, I remember when I first got saved. I, 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 I had a... 67 Mustang had headers and all that. Y'all know that. I, I, it's cool, you know. Long hair. But I got saved. But I, I was out there on the back road and I uncapped my header. Some of y'all know what that means. Just took oh, yeah. the exhaust off, you know. And I mm -hmm. down the road, you know, man. Just that good. And I had my music turned up loud. I changed music, though, uh, Brother Kevin. It, it, it was contemporary now. It was Amy Grant and, you know, B.J. Thomas. So, mm -hmm. it's still seeing, amen. amen. Right. These fellas pulled up beside me, and my Mustang sitting there going, boop, 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 boop. And, and I still got long hair, and, and they, then one of them went, <laughs> some of y'all know what he was doing. He, <laughs> he said, hey, you want to hit? I got mad. I did. I got mad. First time in my life I'd been mad. Somebody offered me that. I was mad, Brother Richard. I thought within myself, I'm a Christian. The Holy Spirit of God said, how do they know? Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right there. That makes good sense. You know, it wasn't long I start. I had to get a haircut. Mm -hmm. yeah. My music had to change. Yeah. My car had to change. Yeah. You know, I figured out I couldn't hold on to the old lifestyle. That's right. Not, not live for God. Right. Hey, I, 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 we're, we're children of righteousness now. Right. Why, why, hey, can I ask you, why do you still want to dress in bondage? Amen. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Some of you ladies need to learn to cover up. Amen. What now? Hey, man, I'm not trying to be unkind. I'm trying to tell you, I don't want you to be a stumbling block. You're a Christian now. Yes, sir. Right. And, and, and though I am saved, this didn't change, Brother Kevin. That's right. That's right. right. Same as I am, yes, sir. Yeah. Some of you fellas, you, you, you get rid of that stupid <coughs> show you got. Right? Some would walk around like a bandy rooster, just. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Still got that attitude, man. Yeah. <coughs> it, it, that stuff's over with. You're Christian now. Amen. You don't have to show off for anybody. Right? Yeah. And we're the people of Christ. All that old pride and stuff. Thank God. And, you know. Honest, you think if I still had long hair and, and, and I, I used to wear a beard and, and all that stuff, even more than a ponytail, I'd cute. You. <laughs> <laughs> you think Brother Lambert had me preaching tonight? Oh, no, sir. <laughs> Go back and read it. It said, meat for the master's use. That means right. fit. Right. For his hey, if you're going to be fit for his use, you're going to have to change. Yes, sir. That old apparel is going to have to go. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Ladies, the Bible says you're to be modest now. Yes, sir. Amen. Bye. Bye. Hey, this is my. The only person ought to see your form Come on. is your husband. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Where, where, where are them clothes that show your form? Amen. <laughs> I'll tell Brother Jim on me later, all right? <laughs> I said it. Miss Karen's sitting here. So. Honest. Amen. Tell me get you some big boy breeches now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Buy the whole pack, you know? Yeah. Don't just get yeah. Half off. No. Yeah. When I got saved, those 
those things start changing. Yes, sir. They do. That, and, and in here, it had to be scrubbing dub dub. Amen. Amen. Because that thing was filthy. Yes, sir. It needed good washing by the water of the word. Yes, sir. Hey, by the way, I, I figured out this. When you let him wash this, this will want to clean up. That's true. Right. That's true. Yeah. There's, there's a problem if you don't ain't cleaning the outside. It's because you ain't letting clean the inside yet. Yes, sir. Now, last thing. Last thing. In, in 1 Samuel chapter uh, uh, 10, verse 6, listen to what it says. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with him, and shalt be turned into another man. What they have the right to expect from us is this. Change. Amen. Change. Hey, they expect us to change now that we're saved. That's true. They have the right to expect this. Uh, we're the one that told them we were saved. Right. Yeah. They're going to watch us. Right. Amen. Right. By the way, it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yeah. Old right. things pass away. Old all things are coming in. Hey, they have the right to expect us to change. Yes, sir. All that cussing you used to do. Right. No more. Right. All that, uh, that cheating. Yeah. Huh? All that gambling. Some of you need to quit buying them scratch offs. Yeah, and, yeah, but Brother Scott, man, that, 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 that lot old now, I, who powerful. Six hundred million. I'll tie it off of it, I promise. <laughs> you will not. If you if you rob God's money to play yeah. fireball, you won't tithe off of it. Amen. Come on. That's true. Get rid of that old gambling stuff. Yes, sir. That old honky tonk music. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Some of you'd be embarrassed if you got in the car, the preacher got in your car and you had the radio on when he got in. Right. Yes, sir. Shame on you. Lord gets in that car with you every time you Amen. get in there. Why don't you get a little, let me help you. Forget Christian music. Get you some sacred music. Yeah, that's good right there. I like that. There's a lot of Christian music that ain't worth listening to. Yeah. But there's some sacred music that'll help you. That's good right there. Yeah. That old rock and roll stuff. What do you need that for? Some of y'all, you still got that. Man, if I said highway to hell, you all of a sudden in your mind, man, you think. <laughs> all right. Man, you think you're climbing some stairway to heaven or something? Oh. <laughs> See, you, your mind's so eat up with that stuff, you, yeah. all you have to do is say a few words, and immediately your mind's there. Right, sir. You see how slick the old devil is? Yeah. Change. Change. You need to change your radio station. You need to change your clothes. You need to change your attitude. Change the places you go. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Let's stand there. Yes.